All right, thanks for watching. And today I would like to state and prove the single most important, in my opinion, identity in analysis, which is called the triangle inequality. And this has to do with absolute value. So let me quickly remind you what an absolute value is. And again, here I'll do everything in one dimensions, but you can, of course, uh, generalize this to higher dimensions. So what is absolute value of x? Well, that's x if x is positive and minus x if x is negative. And if you want the graph of absolute value looks like that, so it is x here and it is minus x here. And of course with this you, definition you can prove other nice things like absolute values are positive or absolute value of a, b is absolute value of a times absolute value of b. But most importantly, uh, you can prove, state and prove the triangle inequality, which simply says that the absolute value of a plus b is less than or equal to the absolute value of a plus the absolute value of b. So it's almost like just taking the absolute values out, but it's important that uh, you have to have the inequality. And I'll explain in a second about why this is so useful. But first, let me prove this. And first, we just need a small lemma, which might or may or may not be obvious to you, but let me still state it. Namely, x is always less than or equal to its absolute value, and it's always greater or equal to negative its absolute value. So x is always squeezed between its magnitude and negative its magnitude. And why is that true? Well, just consider two cases. So if x is positive, then, well, x equals to its absolute value, and therefore x is less than or equal to its absolute value. On the other hand, since x is positive, but minus the absolute value is negative, we also get the other side. x is positive, and that's less than or equal to minus uh, the absolute value of x, because this is for sure negative. And then you just combine that. So x is less than or equal to its absolute value, but x is also greater or equal to its negative absolute value. And now case two, well, if x is negative, then since the absolute value is positive, first of all, x, of course, is less than or equal to its absolute value. But also, well, um, but x is also, well, greater or equal, I think, to minus minus x. Well, x is equal to minus minus x, but also minus x in this case, it's a minus the absolute value of x. Minus x is the absolute value of x. So in other words, we also get, in particular, that x is greater or equal to minus the absolute value of x, because it's equal in this case. All right. Okay, now how do we do this? Again, it's very important. x is squeezed between its magnitude and negative its magnitude. And then all we need to do is just consider again, play around with this a little bit. So step two. So again, by the lemma, again, we want to show that absolute value of a plus b is less than or equal to absolute value of a plus absolute value of b. So by the lemma, again, we know that a, it's squeezed between absolute value of a and minus absolute value of a. And then here's a trick. So we want ideally absolute value of a plus b. So let's add b to both sides. So a less than or equal to absolute value of a, well, that implies a plus b is less than or equal to absolute value of a plus b 
But remember, B is also less than or equal to its absolute value. So this is less than or equal to absolute value of A plus absolute value of B. So that's good. A plus B is less than or equal to the absolute value of A plus the absolute value of B. And now we want to do the reverse. So A is greater or equal to minus absolute value of A. And so A plus B is greater or equal to B minus absolute value of A. But remember, B is less greater or equal to minus absolute value of B. So indeed, what we get is that A plus B is greater or equal to minus is greater or equal to minus absolute value of A plus absolute value of B. And so in the end, if we combine both things, we get that A plus B is actually squeezed between absolute value of A plus absolute value of B and minus absolute value of A plus absolute value of B. So in particular, again, next step, either obvious or not obvious to you, I mean, not quite obvious for me, but uh, if a number is squeezed between two positive numbers, so m and minus m, then the absolute value of that number is less than or equal to m. But as I said, for me it's not quite obvious, so uh, let me just prove this again by cases. And lastly, to show our result, Do it by cases. So case one, assume this is positive. Then what do we know? Absolute value of A plus B, that's A plus B. But we know this is less than or equal to absolute value of A plus absolute value of B. So in that case, we're done. In case two, if A plus B is negative, then absolute value of A plus B, it's minus A plus B. But look, then you just use this identity. Um, you see, A plus B is greater or equal to minus that. So minus A plus B is less than or equal to minus minus A plus B. And that's also A absolute value of A plus absolute value of B. In other words, in both cases, we have that this is true and therefore we're done. Last but not least, uh, why is it called a triangle inequality? Well, it will be clear after the following result. So first of all, uh, just a little definition. The distance between A and B, that's absolute value of A minus B, also same as absolute value of B minus A, and it's literally the distance between two points. And by the way, some people, and we'll use that later, call it dab. Um, and now what do we want to show? Let's show the following again. So a little corollary. So Toyota corollary. In other words, let's show that the distance between A and C, it's less than or equal to the distance between A and B plus the distance between B and C. It's very important. In other words, you can add a B here, provided that you put a less than or equal sign. And the proof, in my opinion, is very important. So 
because it uses an analysis trick we'll use over and over again. So the distance between A and C, by definition, that's absolute value of A minus C. But now, again, extremely important. We will use this over and over again. Subtract and add B. That's good because now you have the sum of two things. So you can use a triangle inequality. So this is less than or equal to A minus B plus B minus C. But by definition, that's just the distance between AB and the distance between BC. Okay, wonderful. And so this is done, and again, I like this because it really uh, illustrates why it's really called a triangle inequality. Because suppose you have a triangle with vertices, I don't know, A, B, and C. Then you see this is the distance between A and B. This is the distance between B and C. And what this is saying is that this length, so this distance between A and C, is always smaller than the sum of the lengths of the other uh, you know, edges. So in other words, uh, the leg, uh, the leg of the, the third leg of a triangle is always less than or equal to the sum of the other two legs of the triangle. Right. Last but not least, I would like to conclude with a related inequality, which you can show in your homework, but that's called the reverse triangle inequality. Because what's nice here, it goes less than equal, but there is another inequality that goes like greater than or equal. And it says the following, the absolute value of A minus B it's greater or equal to the difference of absolute values. For instance, let me just illustrate. Take 5 minus minus 3, again, which is 8, and that's greater or equal to the absolute value of the absolute value of 5 minus absolute value of minus 3, which is 5 minus 3, and that's just 2. And again, it goes the other way. And by the way, you're tempted to use this, but do not use this because it's very useless. So it's, you think it might be useful in one of your problems, but most of the time it isn't. But there'll be one time where it is. All right, I hope you like this. And if you wanna see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.